I logged into my LinkedIn account and um, got some basic information and I'll cover what I'm looking at here in a moment but a lot of these networks you can manage them on the computer or on a device so there's a Twitter app there's a Facebook app Google Plus app LinkedIn app you can decide if it's going to be beneficial for you to get the app or not one downside for having the app on your phone is it's going to be constantly alerting you every time something happens on Twitter or LinkedIn or Facebook or whatever your phone will tell you about it and unless you've changed your settings to not tell you to bother you so much you're gonna get bothered a lot because I'm also getting my notifications from my family text messages and doctor's appointment whatever so the benefit of having the app however is that you can create content a lot faster and reply a lot faster because you've got it in your pocket so that's just a quick note to mention here almost all social networks have a have an app version that you can install to your phone or tablet and have it on the go downside constant alerts uh, notifications unless you change your settings the default is it's gonna alert you to everything that happens someone followed you someone replied to you someone um, sent you a personal message whatever and maybe I want to be aware of all of those things maybe I don't it depends on uh, on you your level of um, effort that you want to put into it and such but of course an upside is can reply to customers quicker post content on the fly and I've got a phone on my device so I can take a photo of that thing and share it right away whereas if I'm doing it on my laptop or my desktop computer I have to get the photo off of my phone onto the computer then I can upload it to LinkedIn I can snap the photo upload the photo right away on LinkedIn on the app okay so this is a screen here then of um, LinkedIn this is the home screen every network has some variation of the home screen where I see content that I've posted or content of my connections or sort of like news or trending content so all networks have this but just making note here home where you see what you've posted or your connections or trends slash news so I saw uh, on my particular one on the right side whatever you're looking at here if you're on the home screen just curiosity um, the, do people see what I see here too? mine these trends and news that's happening Johnson & Johnson is gonna pay four billion dollars over some sort of talc related lawsuit or something are you seeing that too or do yes. people see different things I think it I think what you see here depends on various things about who you're currently connect, connected to and topics that you're connected to so you might not see exactly what I see did you hear about the Build-A-Bear promotion that happened? Yes. Kids wanted, uh, they had the pay your age promotion, which is that you would go in and buy stuff at Build-A-Bear, and if the kid is six years old, you pay $6. If the, if the child is 10 years old, you only pay $10, and normally these things cost, I don't know, $20. So that was so popular, they had to shut it down in an hour, because all of these kids and parents were running to go buy bears. I want to bring in my two-year-old to buy her a bear, so I'm going to pay $2 for it. It was way too successful. Anyway, we see trends here. We see then, I'm seeing updates here. Oh, look at this. I'm connected with Richard Branson. And I'm also connected with Mark Cuban. Yes, you can connect with these big famous people on their LinkedIn. And yeah, I'm trying to get a job with Richard Branson, but am I really going to get a job with Richard Branson? No. Maybe, hopefully. This is, this is again, the one 
to many kind of aspect. When you're this big, people might follow you or, tr or connect with you, but you don't have to follow them back. And they also have special accounts where you don't have to approve the connection. I didn't have to have uh, the connection approved. Right here, I'm following Bill Gates, keeping up with what he's doing, but he didn't have to approve uh, the connection. He's got a, a type of account where people can follow him and keep up to date with him and like and comment on his content, but he doesn't have to ap approve it. So this is the this is the home screen, and you see I see okay Branson posted this or his people or his PR or whoever posted this two hours ago, and I have your jobs recommended for you project manager at Rad Interactive here in San Diego. Now this has been sponsored. Sponsored is a is another term for what? Paid. So uh, Rad Interactive paid some amount of money to have their ad appear on my home screen. Now, as a person, I might say, well, that's annoying. I don't want to see these ads. But hey, wait a minute. Let me go check out this particular project. Because Rad Interactive paid some amount of money, selected some amount of checkboxes, and I fit in those checkboxes. So potentially, this job that is appearing for me is one that I might be very interested in. Because I have my LinkedIn filled in with my technical experience, job experience, education experience, interests and such. So usually these sponsored things that pop up are not going to be random. They should be somewhat tailored enough to you for you to take the bait. Conversely, you will be able to do the same. I will put an ad for my product or uh, job listing to try to get the right people. So I'm going to check the check boxes to find the right people and I'm going to pay some amount of money to reach the right people. Out of curiosity, I will take a quick look at that job because I might not be here next week then. Man, responsible for managing customer relationship and working as an intermediary, blah blah blah. Responsibilities. Managing relationships, communicating, assisting, requirements, four-year college degree, check, experience with managing skills of clients, check, solid organization skills, check, strong knowledge of office, check, strong writing. So I, 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 uh, I qualify for all of those uh, at least. And then there'll be a button somewhere to then click apply. Easy apply right there. 82 views. <clears throat> Okay, so what I'm seeing here uh, is content of like the businesses. It's a little deceptive, but the Richard Branson account here is pretty much sort of like a business page. I see ads or promoted or sponsored content that I might care about. I, I see the updates of actual real people that I know. Yes, I do know a James Bond. I don't know if he takes his martinis shaken or stirred, but he posted three days ago. Um, he sort of passed on an article that he saw from Tamara. So like the other networks, this is sharing or uh, resharing someone else's content, passing it on to more people. James <coughs> thought this article was interesting, so he passed it on to more people, his connections. I'm one of his connections. So four people have liked it. People can comment on it, further share it. That's exactly like the other networks. I might see these sorts of things here. Michelle Fishtel commented on this. I'm connected with Michelle. She's the former dean of this school, actually. Now she's in a different area of the college. We're connected. And uh, she commented on Tina's post. She's an interim dean of instruction at uh, North Orange Community College. Uh, so the dean, she, she wrote that. So you might see this as well. You might see the activity of your connections on your home screen. Uh, you will have the opposite. Your activity could show up on the home screens of your connections. And the value to that, again, is furthering the connections, The the, the networking, 
reaching to more people, trying to get out of this network what, what is important to you. Maybe, because I've been, I've been, aware, be, I've been aware, made aware of this, maybe I'd like to connect with um, Dr. King here and, and try to put out my, my, my resume to her. So connections of connections. Here's Business Insider, so that's a really great website, a trade journal about uh, business and finance and technology and such. Apple is creating a $300 million fund to build solar power in China. So here's an article, it's got some likes, it's got some comments, etc. And they have four and a half million followers. So again, that's the home screen. It's very similar to these other uh, it's similar to these other networks. Yes. Where are these likes coming from? If they show up on, on your LinkedIn, are they liking something on Facebook that automatically links into LinkedIn, or is it nope. Link like it on LinkedIn? These are liked on LinkedIn. Uh, the the word like is most famous on on Facebook, but other networks also borrow that term to like something. So LinkedIn uses the same term to like, but these are things that are being liked in LinkedIn. They're not coming from anywhere else. Okay, so uh, the next links up here. Net, my network. This says nineteen. Now, what do, what does a little red number often mean in a social network? Notification. Notification. Something is happening. Something is being alerted. You're that is you're being alerted to something. So I've got nineteen alerts about my network. I've got four alerts on four messages, and I've got six other types of notifications. Well, when you click on my network, this is when it's going to tell you about. Um, who is inviting you to connect, who wants to be your friend on LinkedIn. But again, don't use LinkedIn as a way to make friends. Use it as a way to make connections with people that are valuable to you. So I've got 23 people wanting to connect with me at the moment. Uh, this screen also may give you suggestions. People you may know. I may want to collect, connect with Charles. Uh, that's actually a former student. And uh, usually my policy is I don't connect with current students, but I might connect with former students, uh, especially if, they, if, if I get the benefit. So based on current connections, my activity, friends of friends, it might suggest to me you might want to connect with other people here. Yeah. All right. And all these invitations, I mean, I don't know any of these people. And, uh, is, is LinkedIn just grabbing people and saying, hey, you might want to... Link up with this guy, or, or some rhyme or reason of this, or late. Nope. Just like I said, that if you've got, based on your connections, based on your current friends, based on your activity and such, it will try to give you connections related to what may be beneficial to you. Uh, these that are, in my case, popping up, I do know some of them because they've been former students and are connected to friends of friends. There's some that I don't know, but it might say it like this. You might want to connect with Christian here because you are currently connected to Marianne. So if any of these have a little link right here, I'm currently connected with Marianne. Marianne's connected with Christian. I might want to connect with Christian. There might be a benefit. And some of them will be rather random, especially if you haven't set up the account completely or used it very much. It doesn't quite know who to try to connect you with. Scrolling further. So again, a lot of people are going to come up. A lot I'm not going to know, but some I will, and some will be, oh, there's Leo. I haven't seen him in a long time. But you're not in any obligation to connect with any of these. You're not in any obligation to accept any of these. Notice that there is the ignore. They will not get a notification that says, Victor ignored you. Nothing will happen. They get the notification if you apply, I mean if you approve it, but not if you ignore it. The only way that they'll know that you ignored it is they check their screen here and the invitation that they sent me is no longer there. So then they could say, okay, well, let me try that one more time. Maybe they didn't actually read it. Or maybe they'll say, oh, well, they're not interested. I won't try again. <clears throat> and I don't know if you got this pop-up, but I got these control who can invite you. The default is that it is very open and um, sort of like any person can try to connect with you. You're not in in under any obligation to do so. But under the settings of your account, which we can get back to on another screen in a moment, 
this says you can go to your settings to further refine who can try to reach out to you. You might also see we suggest connections and content based on your contact. So again, whoever you are currently connected to and what content you create and such, it might try to suggest relevant people to you. It's not always perfect. The algorithm wasn't always perfect, but it tries. So I'm going to see show more here. If your name is here again, uh, don't be offended if I don't uh, choose to connect with you because the way that I would do this, um, I would I would see the person, I would see their name, I get a little blurb about who they are, and if this is enough of a value to me, I do need someone in my business to do video production. Uh, so I might then accept. I may then try to get more information by clicking on their name. Before you click on a name, that does alert people that you've looked at their account. It'll tell you on this side over here. It's being covered by these boxes. But it says, 12 people looked at your profile today. And it'll tell you some basic information of who looked at your profile. So just be aware of that. When I, when I look at this person and I see, OK, president and CEO of Fade Factory, I don't know what Fade Factory is. I want to click to look more. They will have a note somewhere in the notifications or somewhere that says, Victor Campos looked at your profile. That you may or may not care about that. It 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 uh, it may it may matter or not. And again, all of these, and you can do a mass select all and uh, approve all, accept all, or ignore all. Again, use LinkedIn selfishly if it. If it's not going to benefit me to connect someone that is a senior power systems engineer, then I can ignore it. So off to the right there, it says Victor, picture yourself at Allergan. Yes. That's another Allergan. ad or job. Yep. That one is marked as an ad or promotion as such right there. So Allergan or Allergan over in uh, Pleasanton. Uh, they posted an ad and um, they posted that to try to reach candidates and I see it there it may benefit me or not I have to go view what that particular thing is this says digital marketing specialist we're trying to find a digital marketing specialist that's one of my skills so uh, it pops up here because I may I may benefit from that job So you can refine that about from your company. So here, here are other people who, um, oh look, there's Jolene. So she, she works here too. She, work, she used to work at this campus, now she's over at Grossmont. So uh, yeah, that one will be good actually. Yeah, it'd be nice to have her as a connection. So it's as easy as that. So now we're connected, we're uh, going to be able to communicate a lot easier. What's your little blurb say? Uh, I think it says something like "Don't try" or something. No, I'll I'll put it up in a moment. I'll put it up in just one moment. That's under the me, which I'll get to that in one moment. Okay. So we've got that home screen. We've got the my. What do they call it? My network. Okay, so my network, where you see who's trying to connect with you. Remember to only connect when beneficial. You can click to view their profile to determine value, but be aware they will be notified that you looked. My network is also where you can manage your address book or um, followers, so to speak. You can see who you're currently connected to and weed out the ones that perhaps you don't need that connection anymore. This is when I was accepting everyone on LinkedIn a year ago. Now I'm going to look through it and like, well, I don't need to be connected to uh, the manager of this hamburger joint. They're a good friend, but that's not going to benefit me to 
to have that connection. Uh, they're not giving me free hamburgers, so what's the point? So in order for you to manage that, they've got that at um, over here. I've currently got 99 connections, and again, it's not about a numbers game. I, I've had like you know 98, 97 connections for like a year. I just added one right now because it does benefit me to connect connect with Jolene. So I can go here to see all, and I can go in, and they're in the, that order, and I can then message them directly. I can remove them. They don't get a notification that um, that they got unfriended because it's not about friends. But um, they. They, uh, they won't get notified. But here's also the spot where you can do these private messaging with people in case you need to um, chat or talk and such. And it tells you how long you've had the connection. It's alphabetical, or it's, it's uh, chronological. So some all the way back nine years ago. Or you can set it to alphabetically, first name, last name, or search. jobs. So this is pretty self-explanatory. Here's the screen where I would go to search for a job. Keywords about what I'm trying to get hired for based on location, based on my experience, etc. Or I'm, if I'd like to post a job, there is there that too, although I have to set up a business. If I'm going to post a job, I'm a business trying to hire someone. So here's a spot where I can create a business page. There's another screen where I'll show you that too. Because when I, when I talk about LinkedIn, one of the things that people have to figure out, do I want to use LinkedIn as a person or as a company? And they're both very valuable. Whereas most of the time in the other networks, we're using the, the network as a business. This is the one where it could really benefit you to use it as a person. So let me write a little bit about that. LinkedIn could be used as a person or business. Well, let me say here, business or person. And it could be very beneficial to use as a person. Here's some use case scenarios. Let's say my company, Victor's Bakery. Obviously, I would want to put Victor's Bakery on LinkedIn, and I'll show you how to put a business in a moment. But I could put my company, Victor's Bakery, on LinkedIn and show off my products and my baked goods and coupons and all of that, like every other network we've talked about. But I could also use LinkedIn as Victor Campos and promote myself that I own Victor's Bakery or promote my products from Victor's Bakery. And so myself, the person, is also sort of like a, a, um, a marketing tool for my business. Let's say I have, uh, so my, ma my main web design company is called PMD Interactive in, in the real world. Uh, I'm part of PMD Interactive besides teaching. Well, my name is not in that business, and I'm part of um, the group of what of who we are doing web design and such. So it could benefit me as Victor Campos to be promoting PMD Interactive, as well as PMD Interactive promoting itself, as well as Patricia promoting PMD Interactive. So you see the people could also be promoting the business. Example, a person, Victor Campos, is promoting a business, PMD Interactive. This is two, two, two avenues of promotion, not just the business trying to promote itself, but the people in the business. It doesn't always apply. Let's say that example of Qualcomm. It doesn't benefit me and it's not in my job description 
for me to be, be to, for me to be promoting Qualcomm. I'm only going to promote myself. Maybe I'm trying to move to the next job, the next level of my career. So I'm using LinkedIn only as Victor to try to further myself. I wouldn't be the spokesperson or a promoter for Qualcomm. So it's going to depend on your particular case, your particular scenario. Is it going to be beneficial to have both the personal and the business, or one or the other? And I, I think for most people that come to these classes, uh, I think it would be beneficial for most to have both. That me, the person, is going to promote my business. Unless, of course, you don't want yourself associated with your, your business. Maybe you don't want to be a spokesperson for it, or for whatever reason you don't want yourself as a person being the face of your business. Yes. So, uh, I don't know if it's worth elaborating on that, but if you have a small business and you have a full time job and you're promoting your business and you're applying for a job and they see that you have a small business, you may not be as attractive to an employer if they think you've got something on the side. Yeah, and, so and you know, that to me would be a good reason not to promote your small business if you're also carrying a full time job. Exactly. So it is going to vary by people about what's the benefit to, in that scenario, exactly. I probably wouldn't be associating myself with that business. So if I'm Victor Campos, I wouldn't be promoting PMD Interactive if I'm trying to get a job elsewhere, because then they could see it as a conflict. And this is, again, the thing that you cannot prove, that like, well, you didn't hire me because you saw that I've got a side job. That shouldn't be a factor because I'm obviously going to do a good job for your business and do a good job on my side business. They're not going to conflict, but you're not going to be able to prove that some HR person didn't take it in, in terms of, well, they're not committed to us, so we won't even look at them. So in that case, I would separate it. Yeah. Okay, so jobs screen uh, over here, jobs search or post a job. best features for either are often found under LinkedIn Premium, the pay version of LinkedIn. That's one of the ways they make their money. There are several features that are in LinkedIn that are very powerful, but they're often in their premium tier. You can use a lot of things in LinkedIn for free, but then some of this most advanced stuff is the premium tier. And I'll look up the prices in a moment, but honestly, it's pretty expensive. It's like $300 a year to use the most advanced features, like $29 a month, something like that. It may be beneficial to use their premium services for one or two months, then you land the job and then you don't need it anymore, or now you can afford it or whatever. But I, I, unfortunately, I do see a lot of the great features are under the, the, the paywall of LinkedIn Premium. So that's what I was trying to note up here. Let me fix it. I wrote it as Premier. Very good memory. Premium. So LinkedIn Premium, not Premier, LinkedIn Premium is their, their pay system that gives you more features if you'd like to, for example, search or apply, uh, search or post a job. So I won't spend too much time here. It really depends on people. But just for curiosity, let's say chef. Uh, we'll search for, uh, let's start with chef. Search worldwide. Nope, search San Diego.
Uh, we're delighted to introduce a new page layout to make it easier to view. Okay, well, um, all of these networks change every once in a while, perhaps their layout, their features, etc. So here it's telling me there's a new version of the layout. Uh, can I skip it for the moment? Yeah, I'll skip it and look at it later. I guess it gives the new version already. Okay, anyway. So Souchef at Cafe 21 posted three days ago. Snooze Eatery needs a sous chef. Catamaran ho restaurant and hotel in Mission Boulevard. So I just randomly picked a job title, and here's a bunch of possibilities. Six days ago, kitchen manager at Landry's, chef manager in Guggenheimer in Oceanside. So there you go, searching for jobs, and then you apply. If you want to post a job, there's a little bit more of a setup which I won't quite get into. Uh, most people don't need that, but that's that screen. Messaging. Uh, here's your inbox. And again, we all of these pop-ups here. So uh, here are these these messages that you get over here. And these can come from it's called messaging. So messaging can so sort of like private messages from your connections and may include promoted. Sponsored, promoted, aka sponsored, aka paid messages. And that's pretty annoying. You would be getting messages. You think there's a message, of, you get the little notification saying someone wants to send you a message, and you open it up and it's someone sort of showing you an ad. But in theory, these ads are supposed to be relevant to you based on how you filled in your profile, how you use your account. You're supposed to get uh, relevant things. If it's not relevant, there's a button to mark it as spam, and there's a button to block it. Okay. Yes. Okay, so the the other screen that we will look at very soon is this search box up here. So I'll put it that we'll, we'll come back to that one, but to answer something for the moment, there is every social network has this sort of sort search feature. So a potential um, employer could be searching for keywords such as instructor, graphic designer, and my profile might appear there. Now my blurb at the moment is director of technology. I completely made that up. And so if people are searching for technology in San Diego, I might appear. Yeah, on your profile or in your posts, if you create posts. So the, the keywords and the, and the content that you create could get you found. Yep. Or pe people could be searching specifically for your name. And if you have a name, see there's another Victor Campos there somewhere in the world then I would show up on that result too. Notifications, this is what we've seen for, uh, for other networks. Here's people that have been getting in, uh, notif notifying me for various reasons. Now this is going to say things also such as someone's birthday or congratulating someone for being at a certain job for a certain time or showing that someone started a new job. This is, again, the sort of like the remnant of the social 
network of it. And it may be like, well, why do I care about like saying happy birthday to someone or congratulations on a job? Again, you are using this sort of network as how does it benefit you? Maybe I want to get my foot in the door also at Cuyamaca College. So I'll say congrats to them and then get the ball rolling about, hey, who do I contact to kind of see if there's any jobs open at your company? So again, use it selfishly. And uh, maybe that's too harsh of a word, but yeah, use, the, use this network, especially selfishly. How does it benefit me that I'm connected with this person and that person? Even doing a congratulations and all of that could then help me in the long term. This is the 11 people viewed my profile. Well, who are they? Try premium for free. It does tell you general, generally that people have been looking at my account and uh, to see who they are, that's one of those uh, premium features to pay for. So, notifications. Keep up to date with who liked your post, commented, etc. And people's birthdays, job anniversaries, etc. <laughs> Thank you. So, benefit. Of birthdays, anniversaries, would be networking opportunity. Con so, example congratulate someone at a new job and see if you can get any intel about the job that would benefit you. Any intelligence about the job that may benefit you. On that birthday, on those birthday wishes, that's just a little bit of, you know, brown nosing and such. You want to say happy birthday and uh, maybe to someone higher in the company and uh, that sort of thing, be, on, be in their good graces. And that's the, that's, the, that's the networking that you would do, you know, the office politics that you would do in the real world, here in the digital world. Office politics aspects of happy birthday. Okay, then we've got this one of me. This one's a big drop-down menu, but under me, you get lots of sub-items. I'm not going to go through them all, uh, but under me, we will view our own profile in just a moment. But here's also where we've got the settings. Go get some help. Change the language if I want this LinkedIn in a different language. Uh, then we've got, in my case, I've got manage, and I've got various companies that I also work with. So I can manage these different companies. And then there's sign out. There's supposed to be a button as well. I thought, oh no, they moved it over here to work. I can manage these various business businesses on, on LinkedIn here. And I'll be able to create the business also under work. It's over here, create company page. So I'll, I'll note that in one moment. But this me has a lot of sub-elements. View or edit your own profile, your settings, or manage posts, jobs, and companies. So, so manage the, when you are in the managed companies, are those companies that you've been given access to by someone else? Or are those companies that you've created 
for clients? Both. So I can create my own company for myself or a client and manage it, or I can have someone else grant me managerial access and I can manage someone else's account. Okay. And, and so those are all under the email that, that you created for your, your, your Victor Capitals page. So if you've got a bakery page, you'd be using a different email address for your login. No, if I understand your question, let, let's say, okay, Mplace has given me access to their company page to manage it. My face and my email and such will not be shown on their company. I'm logging in to manage their company and post a job posting or answer customers' questions, but not as Victor Campos, as the company Mplace. Okay. So it could be my personal email address but I've been given access by that company to manage it, but it will not be my personal stuff showing up for their company. It wouldn't make sense to do so. Like Facebook, my name, Victor, will not be showing up to some company's business page on the Facebook. It doesn't make sense. John's name is not going to be showing up when they're managing the McDonald's website. Same thing here. So if you want to, if you want to create a company and use the same email contact, you can switch between them like you did on Facebook where they Yes. Hold that arrow. Yes, you can use one email, a personal business, or whatever to create or manage the personal or the business sites. Yeah. Or separate ones. Mm -hmm. okay. Under me, you view or edit your profile, change settings, manage job postings, manage business pages and there's also that sign out button to log out there's then another one that's sort of separated here under work Visit more LinkedIn products. This is what I said that not only can you use LinkedIn as a resume, we've kind of been looking at it all just the resume sort of stuff. Here's the learning. Here is slide share. So I'll just briefly look at learning. Start your free month. Always be learning. Invest in you. I want to learn the basics of drawing. This has been viewed 74,000 times. I want to learn universal principles of design. I want to learn some Photoshop basics. OK, so for example, this Photoshop one, I click on it. There's a preview. There's all of these lessons, how to open a file, five minutes. Uh, a tour of the interface, six minutes. So it's it's a whole course which you can take at your own pace. Some videos are one minute, some are an hour long. Then there's lessons and assignments and everything. Julianne Coast is the instructor here. You get a transcript, exercise files, and everything. This is the one one of the things again that is the the thing that you pay for. This came from Lynda.com. This service that's been around maybe even 20 years now and they have the, they've been doing these online trainings for a long long time they're they're like they're the industry standard and you can learn on so many topics technology topics business topics let's see under business what what can i see about sales selling with stories asking great sales questions pervasive selling is a one hour long course. Eight key psychological concepts in sales. How to win friends and influence sales, right? So here's an hour long course um, on that. And it really is worth it. I've had this account, I, I buy it when I need to brush up skills on something. 
it is a little pricey. I think this is going to be something around like $200 a year. But $200 to invest in my education to help me go up on my career is, is something that is probably worth it. And so the LinkedIn company bought lynda.com several years ago, so probably for like a billion dollars, literally. And now it's part of that organization, LinkedIn. So under work, more LinkedIn features like learning, so online training, subscription-based, but amazing. Slide share. This one's pretty interesting. Slide share, I would describe it as the YouTube of PowerPoint. So YouTube is the website where people upload videos and they can range from these fun frivolous videos about people doing stunts or here's a video of me at the zoo or whatever ranging over to people putting lessons and tutorials and how to do something if you're not using YouTube as a learning tool you're missing out we'll cover YouTube later in the course but YouTube I can go to YouTube and learn learn how to program a website learn HTML I can go get a bunch of free videos from people that from a variety of skill levels putting out videos about learning stuff like for free that's YouTube SlideShare is like that in that people create PowerPoint presentations and put them out there for free Let's see if there's any good ones here I'm looking at um, Twenty seventeen holiday survey: an annual analysis of the peak shopping season. Ten facts about the jo jobs in the future. An essential. Let's let's see over here. Net neutrality. Uh, People summit. Okay, so what, what these things are, these are people's presentations, PowerPoint presentations, that they're putting them out there for free. And it's, it's exactly that, it's a PowerPoint. I can go here and look at all the slides. And so I read that and I see, I learn something and I read the credits and, and all of that. So, okay, well this sounds extremely boring. Who wants to look at PowerPoint presentations? think about it in the in the in the other side of the coin this is a free this is a free account this is you don't have to pay for slideshare the other side of the coin is what if I create some PowerPoints and upload them here and I get this free pub, free publicity what if my PowerPoint is so valuable and it goes viral and it spreads to 50 people or a thousand people well all of these presentations I don't doubt that somewhere either on the first screen or the last screen or somewhere has the information about who created it Let's see if I find it at the end someone's giving themselves their own credit with the links back to their own website to get free publicity so this is a this is stealth marketing stealth advertising a stealth commercial I'm gonna put out a presentation on a topic that I'm knowledgeable, knowledgeable, knowledgeable about with real facts and such. Someone likes it, they download it, they save it, and I've got my credit on it with my website to bring people back to my website. Check out my LinkedIn, check out my website. Maybe see that I have this talent, maybe reach out to me, maybe hire me. So this is a whole other topic that I could talk about for, you know, one in class session, but I have to just really touch on it here, SlideShare. Um, as a consumer, it's presentations on various topics that could be useful to you, learn something. 
as a creator, you share your expertise in a presentation and credit yourself. So website, email, whatever. Use it as a marketing tool to get visibility. So Victor's Bakery, I perhaps put out, we've got like a, one of our famous recipes, but I'm going to put out a version of the recipe that doesn't have all of the secret ingredients. And I put out a version of that, of that cupcake. And I put my five slide presentation. Slide one has my business logo. Slides two and three have the preparation. And then uh, two, three, and four have the preparation. And then slide five has my company address and about the company and an email contact and a phone and whatever. So that's not too complex to create. You can use Microsoft PowerPoint or Google Docs to create a simple presentation, but you're creating it to give something away for free to then have people share it maybe they like your recipe they'll share it to their friends on Facebook they will see who's this Victor's Bakery .com. let me click on it oh they're having a sale today let me buy something best case scenario of course but the idea is that you're putting out content that you're branding for your with your with your name and business and address and all of that and if it goes viral if it gets spread out to more people great if it doesn't well you you didn't spend on anything you monetarily you spent time to upload it and such but you never know for example when we talk about YouTube in my company we put out a video a few years ago on how to create an app in Visual Studio that one went viral it's got like 200,000 views we get contacted all the time about people wanting to make an app now some people expect it to be very 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 cheap because you know people want things for free but we put out a video on how to make an app that is no substitute for a custom-made app and then people reach out to us and we have an, a new version of the video that one's also reached like 150,000 views so in terms here you never know you might create something that people like and share and it goes viral and then it gets you some leads and then it's up to you to then close the deal that's just another another thing that LinkedIn provides for you to to reach people Create. Let's see how do they word it uh, down at the very bottom? Create a company page. Where you set up your business. So just in the interface, there's so much to look at and so much to do with LinkedIn, and it could be overwhelming, and all the networks are overwhelming. There's so much you could do with them, but in short, all of them are about posting and promoting yourself or your business and, and using it consistently. We'll take our second break. We'll cover a couple of other things in, in basics about it, and then we'll cover a little bit more also about posting content. It's about to be 12. We'll take our break until 12.10, and then we'll be back.